Hey everyone, welcome back to some more Python programming tutorials. We're looking at the NPy screen module. In the last video, we were actually checking out how we can set up this uh, uh, next active form variable within our form object or uh, parent app class. Uh, you know, our, our app object that's kind of managing the forms and the screens that we see on our screen. And uh, now that we've actually gotten our program to be able to close properly, <laughs> we can move on. We can do some cool stuff. Now we're finally going to actually add widgets, or at least start to learn a little bit more about them. So I'm going to save my script as 05 now, and let's do, let's, I don't know, let's, <laughs> as usual, let's refer to the documentation to see what we can do. I remember reading way back in the uh, create function, I know it was, it was talking about that as kind of the initializer, or the, the forms constructor. By default it does nothing but we can override it and pretty much it's the best place to set up the widgets on a form. So expect this method to be full of self.add method calls. <laughs> now that's what we're going to be doing. In the form create function, we're going to actually add those self.add self uh, method calls. So that's what we'll call and we'll add some widgets. Now I'm kind of curious if it gives us any examples so that I can, I can show you, but if not we'll just move on to uh, widgets and their basic features. So, okay, let's do some reading before we dive in. Widgets are created by passing their class as the first argument of a form's add method. The remaining arguments are going to be passed to the widget's own constructor, and these control things such as size, position, name, and initial values. Cool. So, let's try it out. I'll hop over to my code here, and in our create function, we can finally get rid of this pass keyword and actually do something cool here. Self.add is the function that's going to create a new widget. So we need the widget name. This function is going to take what widget it is. And in this case, for learning purposes, I'll tell you that we can use title text. Notice that the T is capitalized in title, and the T is capitalized in text for the first T in both of those words. And uh, it is going to need some other arguments, right? The remaining arguments are passed to the widget's own constructor. Their class is the first argument, so that's why we pass in title text, and uh, the second, the remaining arguments are going to be given in. I wonder if we can run it without it, without any uh, optional variables or arguments. And yeah, so now we've got this little thing here, no name, it says, and it is a text box. We can type in text here. Sweet! Got some Got some interaction. Now we can actually do something with our program. Now if I press the arrow keys to kind of navigate and move over to the OK button, I can hit Enter and get out of our program. So let's look at more of those arguments and uh, stuff that we can add to it. The constructor arguments, name, you should probably give each widget a name, which is a string, of course. Where appropriate, it will be used as the label of the widget, and we saw that in our code, right? No name over here was probably set by default. But if we did supply a name, Name can equal, um, let's see, first name, and then we're good. <laughs> now if I run this, you can see first name, John, it's got a value over there. Sweet. It's interesting though, if you didn't want this to be displayed, no name is like it said, well it showed us before by default, but if we try to set an empty string, oh, we get an error. So that's something that I kind of wanted to show you and point out to you. However, if you use a space character, you can kind of hide it. So now you just have an empty text box just floating out in space. <laughs> I use Control u which is a, a command line shortcut to delete all that text real quickly in case you wanted to know. And uh, so sweet. I'll move our first name back over there. And let's see what else have we got here. Rel X and Rel Y. These are positions of the widget on the form that are controlled by relative X and relative Y integers. Normally you don't have to specify them, and in this case the form will do its best to decide where to put them. You can specify only one or the other if you choose. You don't usually need to specify Rel X, honestly. Uh, if you do give a negative value for Rel X or Rel Y, the widget will try to be positioned to the bottom right hand side of the, of the form and of the screen. If the form is resized, NPy screen will try and do its best to keep the widget in place. Nice. There are other arguments for width, height, 
maximum width and height and values even. Okay, so we can supply a default value. So I'll say first name value can equal Joe. If I run this code, hey, now Joe is filled in there. But my name is John, not Joe. <laughs> cool. Values, plural, where a widget offers the user a selection from a list of values. There can, these can be specified here. It's the initial setting of the values attributes. Oh, there are things like editable that determine whether or not we can actually edit the widget. Normally it's true. Hidden, whether the widget is visible or not. Huh. So you mean I can just set this not display with hidden equals true? If I run this? Huh. Really? I'm not I don't I don't seem to be getting that that work. Nope. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Am I entering it the wrong way? Even if it hidden were false, that would mean that it would be visible. Yeah, it's still visible. Okay. So, there we go. A little bit more learning for you guys there. Maybe that one doesn't have as, as much functionality as we were hoping for. Color and label color. That's pretty cool. We'll get into that more. Scroll exit. Slow scroll and exit left and exit right. Or at least uh, other, other options for it. These affect the way that user interacts with multi-line widgets. So, we're going to get into multi-line widgets really, really soon. Of course, because there are a lot more to learn about them. And, uh, but for now, you'll know that that argument does exist. And display update. You can read about these if you'd like. There are functions, it looks like, if you were to subclass a value, or, or, or subclass a widget, like a, a title text widget, and you can actually subclass and kind of derive this function when the value is edited. Like, once you've changed any portion of the text box, you can know what, what's going on and what's happening. So that's kind of a cool way to do it. And, uh, of course, you can override this function for your own use. Same thing happens when cursor moved, whenever you kind of go to a different position in the text box or anything else. Edit is what allows the user to interact with the widget. Kind of works like edit with the form. And set rel y and rel x are kind of similar things that we read about earlier. Titled widgets, those are the things that we're actually looking at right now because, of course, we have title text. You can see that we've got, uh, well, it, it explains here that many widgets ex exist in two forms, one with a label and one without. So the one with the label, in this case, is what we're looking at. First name, or this name argument, acts as our label. If the label is particularly long, when it's kind of uh, displaying it, the label may be put on its own line. So I've, I've seen a few examples of this, like if I entered date of birth... It might be a little long, and you'll notice that date of birth is way up there, and my input is way down here. Some people might not like that. So there are these options here that explains use two lines. If either true or false, override what the widget would otherwise to choose. Field width, how wide should the entry part of the widget be? You can determine, like, you'll notice if I actually typed a lot of text in here it's going to start to scroll a little bit. So it can you can determine how wide should the thing be in your display. And uh, this begin entry at is kind of an interesting variable because you can determine at what column should the entry part of the widget begin. By default, it's 16, which is why all these characters' date of birth in this label is too far, and it's pushing, it, uh, it's pushing our input down a line. If we had tried, like, uh, let's see. What is it called? Uh, begin entry at? Yeah. Begin entry at equals, let's say, 25. Now you'll notice... 0, 5. My cursor's way over here, and that's where my entry begins. So now we're not being pushed over on a new line by our date of birth label. Cool. Internally, entitled widgets are usually a text box, and whatever other kind of widget is required, you can access the separate widgets if you need to, but you normally don't. 
through the label widget and entry widget attributes. Okay, so we can access these things with like a dot selector in our code. However, you may never need to since the value and values attributes of the combined widget should work as expected. Now there is a little bit of functionality for creating your own widgets. You just have to uh, subclass the widget class and you can calculate the area, you can add lines, uh, make attributes, and resize this stuff. I'm not going to go into too much depth about that. Right now, at least for this video, I wanted to show you the very, very basic introduction of a widget and kind of the arguments you can give it and pass to it. A reminder, hidden equals false or hidden equals true isn't working the way we expected. Note the interesting functionality of uh, multiple lines and if your label is too long or where you can begin your entry at a column, that sort of stuff. And uh, title text is just one of the many widgets that we can use. I just want to use it as a gateway to teach you the constructor arguments and what more you can do with them. So, cool. I know this was probably a long video and I was just kind of guiding through the API reference, but that's what a lot of this stuff is. It's kind of exploring and seeing what you can do with it. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm certain we'll get into more cool stuff as we get further and further along in the series, but this is building blocks, man. These are, these are baby steps. <laughs> Alright, thank you again guys, I'll see you in the next tutorial.